Hello, this is David Benign. In this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite apps in the Microsoft infrastructure, which is OneNote. Now, most people in office jobs use Word to take notes, and that has a lot of inherent problems with it. And I just want to show you an alternative, which I love, which is OneNote. If you're already using other alternatives like Evernote, that's okay. I'm just kind of showing you some of the features that I love about OneNote in this video. So this is OneNote. It should come pre-installed. If it doesn't, then I'll show you how to get it later in this video. So it is one of the Office apps that, in my opinion, is quintessential for being able to work and collaborate effectively. So here are 11 reasons why you should be using it. Tick boxes like this, you can tick things as you go along. Something that's just really hard to do with every one of the other Office apps. How do you do it? You literally just start typing a list, um, brush teeth, buy new watch, dry cleaning, and then you can just select your items and then click there and tick them off as you go along. That's as easy as it is. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is tags in general. And there is a drop down here next to these tags. You can do any one of these. You can even create your own custom one. Not one I use very often, but these can be really nice just to know what's starred, what's important. You can even sort of liken it to something that means a specific person needs to do it or whatever. It may be like that. So that's number one and number two. Number three is, as you just saw me doing, I can type anywhere on screen. And I really love this feature. In Word, you cannot have this flexibility. So it's like brainstorming. You just kind of think of what you need to do, and then you can move it around. If you ever want to merge some lists, you can select this kind of content holder, move it around, hold down Shift, and it kind of merges with your list there. It doesn't go to number three, but if I tab it in, it does like that. So a really, really good way that you can think, and it just is really flexible for doing lots and lots of different ideas, things like seating plans and arranging and lots of teaching tools that it allows you to do as well by being able to just drag things from anywhere to anywhere. So I really love that feature. Number four is meeting details. So if you go to the insert tab, you have here meeting details. I'm going to add a page, and let's say here that I want to do this based on a meeting. So I'm going to go to nothing today because it's a Sunday. <laughs> Tomorrow, I have these ones. I can click on that, and it just gives me all of those things. And if I have participants, it'll give me a tick list so I can say who's come and who hasn't come. And I can just write some notes. Again, I can sort of type anywhere on screen and do whatever it is I need to do there. So this is a really, really convenient way of getting around. Let's go back to our list. Number five is math. Now this is kind of nice. So you can do simple math equations here. I can write five plus nine equals, press enter, and it gives me the answer. Just really, really nice. You can do plus minus times divided like that, and it just works. It's, it's just a really nice, useful thing that allows you to uh, get these maths equations there. There's even some more advanced maths for education purposes, like solve for x and simultaneous equations. I won't cover those in this video, though, because that's not what business needs tend to be about. So let's keep going. Immersive reader. So let's say you have a decent amount of text and you want to sort of read that a little bit better. Maybe you're not necessarily a fluent English speaker or you want some help. You can go to the View tab and choose a massive reader. And this is a really, really cool feature that Microsoft is putting into a lot of parts of their products where you can sort of have different things. So anywhere, it can sort of anywhere. read it at to you. You can change your text preferences. So uh, change the spacing or uh, different colors as well. So you have other things here like grammar options. You can turn nouns in a certain color, adjectives in a certain color like this. Show the labels of what each one of them is if you really, really desire. 
uh, split out into syllables. This is good for non-native English speakers or learners, maybe children. It came in first as an education feature, actually. And then reading preferences, you also have this picture dictionary. <laughs> so let's see some instances where that could work. So screen, this is showing me a screen and what it could look like. So here it's choose. <laughs> so that can be kind of nice. It doesn't work for everything. It works for file, but not for all the words. But it could be a nice little feature there that you can add on. All right. Now we get to the nitty gritty. What do I really, really, really love about this is the fact that you don't need to choose where to save it. Every new note is a new page. It's kind of like if you have a notebook that is a paper notebook where each page resembles something completely different. Maybe page one is about a meeting that you went to regarding the environmental scheme. Page two will be maybe just a few thoughts off the top of your head about a new proposal you might do. And if you have a paper notebook that's traditional, you would just sort of write those in. And here as well, as I'm stuck taking notes and doing whatever it is that I need to do, I can just exit out of OneNote. It doesn't ask me what I want to save because it is just one notebook. Everything is a new page in one notebook and you don't have to choose a file location. So many people get into a heap of trouble trying to choose a file location for lots and lots of Word files that they then can't find. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of silly that people shouldn't use Word for notes that way. I just go back to OneNote and it's just saved everything from where I left off, which is really, really amazing. So it auto saves. It doesn't have a save button. You can share it as well because this is actually something that syncs in live. You have all these sharing options. I'm not going to go too much into this because when it came out, it was quite revolutionary. But now that you can sort of have co-authoring at the same time for Word documents or Google documents or all those things, it's sort of less impressive. But it is still useful to know. The search is brilliant as well. So the search means that no matter how many hundreds or thousands of pages you have here, the search will let you find whatever it is you need. And I know this because I actually physically have hundreds of pages that I don't bother to file. Look how many I have in Quick Notes. Because I know that I just need to search for things and it will get me to answers however quickly that I need to get to like that get a haircut. <laughs> All right, e even ridiculous things I would put in here, it has there. And this is your recent notes, sort of what you've been looking at recently. And this is just your structured approach. I know some people like structuring it very, very cohesively with sections and pages. I personally don't bother because that just uh, adds too much effort. I find the search is just brilliant. And I always want to edit my recent notes anyway. So I find it really good to just be able to search it and not necessarily file things that well. It's kind of like a paper notebook. You often wouldn't file that. You just keep it as it is. All right, so that's number nine, file printouts. So on to the last two. These two are a bit different. So let's say that you have a file that you want to be here and you want to be able to talk about it. So I can go here, click anywhere on the page again, and choose a, I'll, I'll do it through file. Uh, it shows you what you want to edit. I'll go for this one that I've pre-prepared. Put in OneNote. This is an Excel file. Now I can either upload a link and then I can double click it to put it in, insert as attachment, and then it's something I can double click. But what's the most useful and the most unique is this kind of insert as printout. And what it's done there is it's inserting it here. As you can see, this is a live printout of how my file looks. So uh, if it's edited, then it's also showing up the difference here. Now, because it's OneNote, I can sort of create some comments or do whatever it is there and kind of type anywhere on screen and move it around just like anywhere else. All right, so on to number 11, insert audio notes. Now, this is a kind of useful little feature here. You can just go to insert and choose audio. And then it just records as you're doing it. Notice now it's recording there because I've got stop and I can go back. 
So I'll stop there. I can move this around like I can with everything else in OneNote and then just play it back. And then it just records as you're doing it. Notice now it's recording there because I've got stop. And then it just records. So I'll pause it. You have some other options here as well. I've seen it used quite well for people doing feedback based on documents, particularly with something like file printouts. It could be quite nice. And two more clip notes. So these two are actually, I'm going to have to leave this OneNote infrastructure for a bit, but I'll come back to it. So clip notes, this is, it actually comes as a web browser extension. So you can install this as a web browser extension. And then what you can do is you can click on there on any web page. I'm going to do it here on the flag of Cambodia. And choose what you want, whether it's the full page, a region of the page that allows you to drag some of it like that. And this will put it as an image. But what's really nice is this article section. So this article section allows it to load up and often just do the text that's associated with it. So eventually after it loads, you can bring it in and then it sort of looks like this. It's all with hyperlinks and it's editable, copyable text. You can even get it if it has a table inside like it does here, then the table sort of carries through. Um, so many links that if you accidentally click on them, then it will look at those. So yeah, really, really nice feature. If you highlight certain things, then it can come out highlighted as well. And just another small thing with that, if you ever do some copy and paste of certain things, including images or whatever, and copy that, and then paste it into OneNote, it will bring you the link, which I think is a really, really nice touch. So it shows you where you got that article from. And finally, my last one, number 13. Now this one is not available in this feature of OneNote, unfortunately. It's only available in OneNote 2016. And this is the one that comes pre-installed with Microsoft Office. So it, it has a bigger ribbon and a, a lot more functionality, but one feature in particular that I love, that I really wanna show you is this. If you go to the View tab, and then you have Dock to Desktop. So I'm gonna add a page and then Dock to Desktop and we'll see what it does. So it just puts a sidebar over everything. So notes from meeting, really good for doing some meeting stuff because whatever application you open up, it will talk about that. And when it's docked, if you have an application like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, it says linked note taking is running when OneNote is docked. So that means that now it's got this and it knows that I'm talking about this slide when I'm referring to this file. Uh, so this works with other applications as well. And I can point to it. And even if I've closed the PowerPoint file, for example, I can launch it back up again directly from OneNote through here. And also from PowerPoint and Word, I can go to the Review tab. And if I click Linked Notes, that will open up this back because it's linked to it through that. Notice as well that I actually started this video saying 11 reasons, but now I have 13 because <laughs> I think that 13 is genuinely good reasons why people should use them. So that's it. Just a couple more things about the different versions of OneNote. Now let's go back to full screen where we can edit this. So OneNote used to be only this version that came pre-installed with Microsoft Office. Then they introduced this version over here, which comes with Windows 10 and is very similar to the Mac version. And this is the one they're focusing on improving more as we go along. But there is also a web version as well that has, for a large part, the same functionality as this one, but a little bit less. Hello, my name one, is David Benheim. And, and, and you can video, get to it without to necessarily needing to install any other software. So if you like this video, OneNote. please hit the like button. And I have tons more videos like this, so check them out. I do a lot of stuff on Excel, Power BI, and PowerPoint. And I'm just starting to do other applications as well, like this one on OneNote and Teams and some other things as well. All right, thanks for watching.